The host of RN Breakfast, Patricia Carvelis, joins us now from Melbourne for our regular chat on mornings with a striking Indigenous print. And to that point, Patricia, we'll get to the other issues in a moment, but first I wanted to ask you about being up in Arnhem Land for the Gama Festival. What was it like to actually be there? And what do you make of the government's strategy with the referendum? Will it work? Uh, the atmosphere was kind of electric because this was... The fir firstly, Gama has been off for a couple of years because of COVID and Indigenous communities have really been very closed off from the rest of the country. So there was a great sense of uh, reuniting. And then we had a Prime Minister who arrived and didn't disappoint. Now, uh, pe people, Indigenous leaders, uh, traditional elders, uh, people who have been going to these events are used to Prime Ministers rolling up, lots of fancy language, uh, sometimes uh, Malcolm Turnbull spoke in uh, Yulnu, for instance, when he turned up a couple of years ago, but then he broke hearts because he didn't deliver on the call from the Uluru Statement from the Heart that was delivered five years ago. This Prime Minister did, and so uh, the anticipation was huge. He didn't fail. Uh, there was great positivity about where this may go next. And even though the opposition um, looks to be strengthening its potential opposition to this, it hasn't happened yet. They haven't closed the door, Joe. It's important to say that Julian Lisa is keeping the options open. Peter Dutton hasn't closed the door here. Yes, just into price as she did on uh, as a as a, a, a um, member of the country Liberal Party and a member of the party, uh, the broader party room has been raising concerns about a voice, but that isn't the collective view yet of the party. And so there's great hope that perhaps, as Noel Pearson said last night on 7.30, that Peter Dutton could still be persuaded. Um, I'm, I'm not sure if he can, but I know that he did walk out um, on the apology to the stolen generations, and I'm, I suppose there might be some sort of personal reckoning for him about the way to deal with these issues. Just another point I think is important to make. Noel Pearson mentioned in that interview on 7.30 last night that he believed that a, a form of words to recognise uh, Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islanders as the traditional custodians of this land or, or the history there, because this started as a recognition exercise, perhaps should be included in this change, not just the simple question that uh, the Prime Minister articulated, which was just about a voice and representation. That's not the collective view of everyone. I've spoken to people, part of those Uluru dialogues, who say recognition was actually not what Indigenous people wanted. So watch the space on that, because I don't think there's just one view on that. Um, although the government has made it clear that it's this is the starting point for language, it's open to ideas. Um, there's a lot still to play out with this. It's very hard for successful referendums to happen, Joe, as you know, and I think listeners have heard. But I think there is great goodwill and uh, it's, a, it's a moment. It's a test for this country. Yeah, and um, interesting whether to we can hear get Anthony together Anthony Albanese on this. pointing back to what happened in 1999 and saying we, we very clearly saying we have learned the lessons from that and that's how we're going to approach this, quest, this referendum question. Yeah, and that, that lesson being that, you know, that, that debate yeah. over this model versus the, the, detail the detail ends up muddying the waters, especially when Parliament is the supreme body. It will determine, can I say, what a voice looks like. That is clear in the proposal. It is always going to have the power to design the voice. So when people say, and I'm not saying detail doesn't matter, let's, yeah, sure, let's find out what the voice might look like. The point is, Parliament, like whoever you elect in the parliament will be responsible for what a voice looks like. That's actually in the constitutional question. So maybe when people ask that, I think the bigger question is, what do politicians think about what a voice should look like? Because they're going to have a lot of power ultimately in deciding. Yeah, we'll hear a lot more about this over the next 12 months or so. Uh, now turning to other issues, uh, in the past couple of days there's been the ACCC report warning about gas supply, domestic supply uh, over the next 12 months and then the government made the announcement yesterday about signing new agreements with industry uh, but also warning that it was looking into this trigger where it could order gas companies to hold back a certain amount of gas for the domestic market. Where's that at now? So I spoke to the Resources Minister, Madeline King. She reserves her right to pull that so-called trigger. It sounds so dangerous, doesn't it, Joe? Uh, it was designed by the Turnbull government. 
Um, she still says, though, that is not her preference. She wants them to play ball, right? She wants them to address this shortfall that's been uh, predicted by the ACCC that's going to hit next year. I put to her, hang on a minute, if, if your negotiation doesn't work and they say they will, but there is still not a delivery on this, um, people will hold the government politically responsible, won't they? Because this is their window for taking some action now. And that's when she said, well, look, you know, the trigger remains absolutely still possible that we would do that, forcing them not to export so that, you know, a, an element of the, the gas. Here is our exchange. As I said before, work with the gas industry to come up with solutions. I do think it is a more constructive approach to take to to work together rather than to uh, intervene more in the market. There's been a lot of intervention already and that has been sensible and thoughtful and has worked to the benefit of the Australian consumer. This is another mechanism that is on the table. We can use it. I would rather find a solution. So she'd rather find a solution. I put to her, does she think the moratoriums on fracking, for instance, in states uh, should be lifted? She says it's up to the states, but it's self-evident, was the language she used, that if they did explore, there would be more gas. Uh, some people have interpreted that as kind of a loaded message, uh, but she did say it's up to them. Um, so all still on the table, but ultimately the, there is the question around the social licence of gas companies and whether they're really, really perhaps moving towards losing that as people feel continually frustrated that they are chasing the profits rather than looking after the domestic market. And talking about dealing with costs very briefly, another interest rate rise expected this afternoon. Uh, and looking at this from a political point of view, uh, ongoing challenges for the government in dealing with the cost of living pressures on people. Huge. And people are just being hit, 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 right? And the Prime Minister said today he does back the RBA and, and they're independent in terms of making this judgment. That's an important statement from him because he was seen as kind of leaning in uh, a week or two ago. So here he is saying it's their decision, but cost of living pressures are huge and that's going to be a political problem for this government. OK, we've got to leave it there. Love your work. Patricia, great having a Thank chat. Thank you. See ya.